Okay, hi friends. This is Chris with Josephine's Design. We are in Lesson 1, Day 2 of War Room, the video's Bible study. And I just asked a question because in here we are being told the first occurrence of Ephesians reference the trickery of men. What are we to do with that? How do we handle that? We go to God in prayer, we go to the Word, and we armor up. We put on and pray the armor of God. Let's keep going. But in Ephesians 6.11, it describes the schemes, lies of the devil. Paul's, and I'm going to make a little D there. I know, it's, it's a thing with me. I know, such a teacher, right? <laughs> Paul's recommended defense. Uh, Paul's recommended defense? The armor of God. One does not commonly equate prayer with battle attire, but it is no accident that Paul commands believers to pray when engaging in spiritual warfare. How better are we to do in this world if we will just stop and pray? And I mean seriously, stop and pray for each part of the armor. I have to tell you, when I was losing my parents, when I was caring for my parents, when I was losing them, and then after I lost them, and all the chaos that ensued, and from some of the most damaging, hurtful things came from those I was closest with. And I'm not going to say it's over, because it's not. I mean, we're still, we've got tax returns, we've got some documents to file, we still have some actual things to do that I had given to other people and they're just not doing them and it's the only thing I've given away. So, all I can say right now is that's my prayer now. And if I were to encourage you to do anything, print this out, copy and paste it when I put it on the website or one that you might even have that's better. Print it out in full color, expand it, do whatever you need to do, laminate it, and put it in your war room as well as this scripture right here. And I will put this on the website. Print it out. Make it big. Laminate it. <laughs> and put it in your war room. Okay, let's keep going. Name three things we are told to do as we put on the armor of God. I'm gonna let you guys do that on your own. But when should we pray? In verse 18, it tells us specifically, with all prayer and petition, pray at when all times in the Spirit. All times. Whom should we pray for? For all the saints. All the saints. I just, I'm always rereading just to make sure I don't miss anything. Please forgive me. How should we pray with perseverance? Be on alert and with all perseverance and petition. Stay alert. What does that mean? Every prayer and request. What does that mean to you at all times? What does that mean to you? All perseverance. What does that mean to you? Intercession for all the saints. What does that mean to you? Think that through. Think that through based on what Miss Clara said in that movie. And if you haven't gone and seen the extra scenes afterwards, please, I beg of you, find a resource, see the extra scenes. You will get to meet the real live Miss Clara that the movie was based on. You even see her Bible in that in the movie too. How much we pray, how much we pray reveals how much we depend on God. Praying is the antithesis of the self-sufficiency modeled by the Laod Laodicean believers. Please, if I said that wrong, please forgive me. Laosha, or, yeah, Laosha. Is that right? Laosha? Laosadine. Anyways, okay, I'm going to stop. Approaching God through Jesus in prayer at any time for anything is always a priceless privilege. It is a privilege to pray. In days of old, you had to go through someone else to talk to God. You get to go straight to Him all day long, anywhere, anywhere. 
We all need God all the time. Not part of the time. Not in the emergencies only. All the time. We need His grace moment by moment to help us not waste opportunities. Not become self-centered and not fall into what? Sin. A richer, more active prayer life results when we humbly admit our need for Him and then daily depend on Him for the wisdom and grace to do His will in each situation. It is by no mistake that I watched a video um, and be told why that person prayed. And, and it was very genuine. And it made me stop to think, what am I praying before I eat? Am I praying, you know, thank you, God, for this food? What is it? Um, thank you for this food. Oh, God is good. God is great. Let us thank him for this food. Amen. Is that it? Is that what we're praying? Is it a rote prayer? Is it the same thing over and over? Or are we praying sincerely? Okay. What causes you to forget your need for Christ and the armor of God? For me, I get busy. I get distracted. Things start going well. And then, wham. Every time. It's like, I used to always say, I would break leg. I would have my legs broken. I would have, I literally had a toe, almost completely ripped off a big toe that everybody thought would have to be amputated. But by God's grace, it wasn't. And I was for sure going to lose the toenail. Everybody said it. And have a toenail there. It's it's crazy. Um, it doesn't have full feeling, but I'm, praise God, you have to have a big toe. I'm already a klutz, right? You know, keeps your balance. But I always said, you know, people would say, well, how can you stand it when God puts you to bed? How can you just go to bed? Because, my sweet friends, I have learned along the way to be content. Not always at first, but now too. I'm watching those around me get stir crazy. And I mean really stir crazy. And we've gone through a lot. And all I can say right now is we have got to find joy in our journey. We've got to armor up. The battle can affect us in our homes, in our marriages, with our children, with our dear friends, within our church bodies. Just recognize right now we've got all ends of the spectrum screaming their thoughts. <laughs> I mean, in every subject. But who should we be listening to? And who should we be going to when seeking wisdom? Let's keep going. Um, prayer is one of the best resources when it comes to spiritual growth. It is a weapon. You pull it out like a six-shooter. You pull it from your hip and you put those hands together. You don't point your gun. <laughs> well, you're pointing three fingers back, right? Okay. Like I always say when I'm saying, you know, this, I've, I'm you know, trying to say something to y'all and I'm saying, well, there's three fingers coming back at me. It's not just y'all. This is what we do. We put our hands together and we pray. And I like what she says here. Or he says, I think it's a he who wrote this. It is also the best position to be in when making evaluations and decisions, let me add. As you close today, choose a posture of submission. Now, I've told this story before. When my son was, gosh, maybe six years old, my husband was in a bad thing at work. Um, it was just a really bad time. I mean, IT world is tough. And people are not a friendly sometimes. <laughs> Matter of fact, it is shockingly, shockingly difficult. And... Um, People have no problem letting their worst side show and get and somehow they get away with it. But I remember one day I came to my two oldest, our youngest wasn't born yet, and I said, guys, we need to pray. Daddy's in trouble at work. It's going to be okay. But we just need to pray right now for Daddy. And I remember we were praying, and I opened my eyes just for a second to check on the kids because, you know, that's what we moms do. We pray, we're focused, and then we're like, oh, got to check, make sure they're still here, you know. And um, he was probably about four years old. And he, at one point, was down on his hands and knees and elbows, praying down like this. And then the next time I checked on him, he was laying flat before God with his hands still folded, praying. And I remember thinking, wow, that is prostrate before God. That is flat on our face before God. Because I was on my knees. 
And even back then, I had bad, bad knees. And I just wrote, I, w I just remember just tears going to my face thinking, wow, God, you've just taught me so much to see this child do exactly what you've called us to do. And he's never been taught it. He just knew in God's presence, in God's awesome presence, he knew he humbled himself before God because he loved his daddy. He loves his daddy. So, as we move on, um, there was something else I was going to say. It slipped my mind, I'm sorry. If it comes back to me, I'll, I'll share it with you. So, we choose a posture of submission on our knees or lying down, face down. Confess your great need for God. Here's what I was going to say. If you've ever gone to a Beth Moore conference, she is always on her knees when she opens that conference. Every day. She will get down on her knees to pray. Um, and she's just a tiny bit of a thing. <laughs> if you don't know who Beth Moore is, she's in the vi video, by the way. But she's just a tiny thing from Texas. And um, I, I've been blessed to see her in conference a few times. And all I can say is, is that she humbles herself before she begins any conference. And that was huge for me. Okay, author? So humble. So there is something about that. Ask him to identify for you things you tried to place before him. Express your desire to remove the things and depend solely on him. We pray, God, break our heart for what breaks yours. And we all have things like this in our life. Do not think you're alone. Do not. Um, we are going through things in our household like we have never gone through them before. And in our extended family, etc. I never dreamt years ago that this is how we would be. I'm sure none of us did. Nobody thought we'd be in the middle of a pandemic in 2020. I mean, not even in 2019 did we think we'd be in the middle of it. So... We just got to ask God to help clear out the junk, the dead wood. Now, before moving on, compose a statement indicating your desire for richer prayer life expressed to God where you would like your prayer life to go in the days ahead. Ask Him to help you get there. What does your prayer life look like now? What is your goal for your prayer life? Please leave a comment below and just say, done, that you have done this. And I'm asking you in all sincerity, let's be accountable to each other. I still have to do mine, and I will answer done as well. Let us all answer each other. And when we see somebody has said done under the video, let us commit to pray for that person. And even if they use a handle like, you know, I don't know, Billy Bob's Knobs or something like that. You just pray for Billy Bob's Knobs. God's going to know who you're praying for. You don't need to worry about a specific name. You just know that God will know who your heart is praying for. Okay? All right. I wanted to share some additional scriptures, so please forgive me. I'm going to kind of go off a little bit here. But God really laid on my heart um, a reason to keep digging. So, here we go. Now, I'm going to go back to what Elizabeth prayed that she learned from Miss Clara. Submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee. Submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee. So let's look at this. Deuteronomy 32, 18. You neglected the rock who begot you and forgot the God who gave you birth. Is that where you are? I've been there, and I'm sure in my busyness of life, if I'm not careful, I can be there many times again. And that is, again, Deuteronomy 32, 18. And I'm printing these out so I can journal with them later as well. <laughs> so, Judges 3, 7, The sons of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and forgot the Lord their God and served the Baals and the Asherah. So when we think about, are we focused on God? What happens when we lose sight of the Lord? Are we worshiping idols in our life? 
I mean, we hear this all the time. We go to church and we say, what's on our throne? Is Jesus on the throne of our heart? Or is TV on the throne of our heart? Is sports on the throne of our heart? Is money on the throne of our heart? Is shopping on the throne of our heart? And do I dare say, is art on the throne of our heart? Or are we doing it to bring blessings and joy to God? Is our heart turned towards Him? Are our eyes seeking God? Again, Judges 3, 7. I mean, God was really laying this on me. I, I'm just sharing with me, you guys what my heart was going through. Psalms 106, 21. They forgot God, their Savior, who had gone, who had done great things in Egypt. Let's say that one more time because I messed it up and I'm sorry. Psalms 106, 21. They forgot their, forgot God, their Savior, who had done great things in Egypt. How easy do we forget when God does great things in our life? Do we become like the, the lost children of when they fled Pharaoh, when they fled Egypt? You know how they just kept going back to their old sinful ways and kept forgetting about God. They even went as far as to make idols and worship idols instead of God. Is that what we're doing? Do we put other things before God? I know, right? And we wonder why He can't hear us when we pray. I'm saying this to me. I mean, not all the fingers are pointing back at me, okay, guys? <laughs> Isaiah 17, 10. For you have forgotten the God of your salvation and have not remembered the rock of your refuge. Therefore, you plant delightful plants and set them with vine slips of a strange God. Well, do you know what a slip is? The only thing I know it is as we planted sweet potatoes. Well, our daughter and son-in-law gave us slips. They had rooted, they had rooted some sweet potatoes. And we could not get organic sweet potatoes anywhere. They had picked up some when they happened to go over to Austin before everything got shut down. And they had extra slips. So when they came over around Mother's Day, they brought me six of them. Those slips have produced thousands of leaves thousands of leaves and by it's I, I i started we started eating the 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 leaves putting them in stir fry dehydrating them for soups over the winter and you know we bought two sweet potato plants at a nursery in um in san antonio my husband got them and um i thought ooh, you know ooh, i like this brand i like the red you know i wanted the more red vines and all that because antioxidants we dug up our first plant um, this weekend. It was some, but not a lot. And when we went over and we looked where we had those slips that were formed from scratch, organic scratch, the vines on the plants, the other vine was like that thick. The vines on the plants are that thick. We let it keep going. So we're going to harvest this weekend. But can you imagine... If we, if we have forgotten the God of our salvation and have forgot to remember the rock of your refuge, therefore you plant delightful plants and set them out with the vine slips of a strange God. How much, if we forget God, it can multiply in our life. It can just take over. Literally, those sweet potatoes are growing so much vines and leaves. It crawls out all along the sides on all the other gardens. It crawls onto the driveway. It crawls ever. I mean, and when I say driveway, it's like a six foot vine. It's crazy to get on the driveway. It's crazy to see how much they've grown. So what are we planting in our lives? And remember Isaiah in, in this particular chapter or this book, He's trying to get people to what? Turn away from their wicked ways and turn back to God. God called Isaiah. And he said what? Here am I, send me. Here am I, send me. Is that what you're saying to God in your prayer life? In your day-to-day -day existence? Are we planting slips in the wrong way, right? Okay, the last verse I wanted to share was Isaiah 44, 21. It says, Remember these things, O Jacob, and Israel, for you are my servant. I have formed you. You are my servant. O Israel, will you not be forgotten by me? Do you forget God? And do you think he 
he might forget you? I don't want God to ever forget me. I want to be before him so much every day, all day long, that he's like, again? No, he would never say that. But isn't that the relationship we want with the Lord? Like, you know, just like, a, like have you ever been around an incredible mentor and you just walk beside them and then they teach you all of these things and you're just like a sponge and you're just learning and you're learning and you're learning and you're learning and you're learning and they're like, wow, I didn't know I was talking so much. You're like, no, keep talking. Keep going. I'm learning. I'm learning. That's what I want to be like. That's what I want to be like with God. I want to be that sponge that's always hanging around so he's going to keep teaching and teaching me. I may have to learn the same lesson a few times because, you know, this old hard head of mine, but I'm okay with that. I mean, I've learned a long time ago, it, if we are not at least trying, if we are not seeking God, seeking his face, seeking his will in our lives, how can we even begin to ask to learn from him? How can we begin to ask him for protection or for answers or for healing or for whatever it is that we're looking for in our lives? So, how do we begin that? We begin that with getting before the Lord, getting humble, focusing on him, digging in the word, and praying. And again, go back, my dear sweet friends. If you don't know what that looks like to humble yourself before God, pray the Lord's Prayer. Okay? We talked about last week. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Matthew chapter 6, I believe. Hold on. You guys probably have it all memorized. I don't. You know me. So, Matthew 6. But when you pray, go into your inner room, close your door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will, resort, will reward you. Matthew 6, 6. And Jesus said, pray like this. Okay? Now, what do we pray when we get there? Well, this week we're learning to pray and put on the arm of God. So we can be a prayer warrior. I am super excited for next week. Um, I kind of work a little bit a week ahead, so you know me. Um, I am involved with a, a group, um, a Christian group of women that I just love. Um, and I've shared with you guys before. It's the Sojo Academy. And um, it's headed up by two dear women of the Lord. Titus, two women for sure. And um, I, they are humble. They are honest. They are real. And yet they point us to God. And they point us to the Word always. So, one of my dear sweet, one of the two ladies, dear sweet lady, she has some incredible war room prayer cards. So next week, I'm going to bring some of those and share with you guys. And I'm also going to bring some insights. I've been reading a lot of blogs that she has either written or pointed to this last week. So, let's, let's dig in next week, okay? So next week, we are going to work on page 18 and 19 this is it for next week okay page 18 and 19 and you start thinking if you haven't figured out where your war room is if you haven't because next week I'm gonna ask I'm gonna ask you guys to tell me where your war room is I know how nosy am I I know and then I'm going to ask you, what is in your war room? Think about the movie, where that's at. Okay, let's pray. I'm going to let you go, and I'm going to bring you some extra goodies next week to share with you for your war room. Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we bow before you and we just praise your name. You are an awesome God. You tell us in Scripture you reveal to us where our hearts are at. You show us your incredible love and grace and mercy if we just seek forgiveness from you, Lord. And we truly repent and we turn from our wicked ways. God, please take away whatever is keeping us in our hearts from being there with you. Help us to seek your face all throughout the day. Help us to pray without ceasing. Help us to go in our inner room and pray in quiet 
and in secret as well. Help us when, and I always, I thank you, God, for my bad knees because I get to pray to you every time I stand or sit down or when I walk or stand too long. And I thank you, Lord, for the pain because it is when I call your name and I thank you, God. We thank you for the good and the bad in our lives, God, because we know you are a God that will teach us and never leave us, never forsake us, and guide us through these uncertain times. God, I literally heard this week, and you know, Lord, a young lady who spoke about things that are going on in this world, actually two of them, who may or may not know you as their personal Savior, and the fear in their voice and what they're doing to try to get through because they see things like they've never seen before. We're all seeing that, God. This is an unprecedented time. And it's not just COVID, and it's not just um, the political issues, and it's not just the um, protests, and it's not just the, um, the, the natural events that are taking place left and right. Lord, we know people so many of us know people right now that their homes are flooded God that their homes may have burnt down or they may have lost everything due to these very odd natural events we've had earthquakes God we've had fires we've had hurricanes we've had tornadoes we've had floods God we know in your word you tell us to be the watchman on the wall and to be looking for you, for your return. God, help all of us to have our hearts right in prayer with you so that when you come, we will know your voice. Just like the shepherd, the lamb knows the shepherd's voice, God. Just like that, God. Help us to know your voice so when you call us, we will come run into you. Jesus, we love you. Please be with each and every person who's a part of this channel now and in the future. And let your name be known as the God forever. The God of all little g-gods. You are the one, the only God. You are not man-made. You are the creator. You are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. And we love and praise your name, Jesus. Lord, please help us as we continue on. Please take care of each one of our subscribers, Lord. Help those that are in this study to put on that armor of God every day. And Lord, help me to remember that as well. Lord, put your hedge of protection around each of our families. Put your hedge of protection around each of us and our health. Help us to be where you need us to be so that you can be made known. In Jesus' most precious name I pray. Amen. Friends, I've shared this before. That prayer when I said, help us to know your voice like a lamb knows the shepherd's voice. So, in John, it talks about that in the book of John. Many years ago, when I was a young girl, I... Um, had I raised lambs in FFA and I had this lamb who I adored his name was Waddles because <laughs> he was big he looked like a barrel when I got him they had overfed him he waddled when he walked and he was a miniature lamb so it was really bad <laughs> he was almost as wide as he was long but um he would follow me like a dog I never had to put a leash on him he would come and lay his head in my lap it was such a blessing to have had that lamb and I remember he got sick right before we were going to the big show in San Antonio and my um my ag teacher would come out and weigh the lamb make sure he was doing okay because you know I exercised him he had hurdles he jumped he had inclines to climb he had all this all this stuff my husband my, my husband my dad built for my dad was also an FFA he was so he was so sweet how he built everything he even had a, a, a little house that you could drop the sides when it was too hot and he'd have airflow. I mean, it was amazing. And my dad had it situated a certain way in the yard so it catched the most air because we were down on the coast. It was hot. Anyway, so one day I was taking Waddles out and I opened up.